guys. Today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Uh, Squish it up a little bit. Um, last time um, I didn't tape the back workout, so I'm going to be taping the back workout today. Got the camcorders all energized and ready to go, batteries all set, so um, we're going to be in for a treat. Do some drop sets, deadlifts, rows, T bar rows, um, some dumbbell, dumbbell rows, and some. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any pull downs yet or not, but something like that. So, um, like I said, today's back day. Um, but before we even before we even get started, actually we're going to go check how much I weigh. This is the first time I actually stepped on the scale since November 6th um, for the National Olympia. So we're going to find out what I weigh right now. And then I'm gonna do kilograms for you guys for people down in Australia. Here's kilograms. What are you guys doing out there today? Today is back day, and we are starting off with a machine assisted pull up instead of your regular conventional pull up. Um, you know, usually when I do this, I do anywhere between 10 to 15 reps. Um, usually like about anywhere between between three and five sets. Um, the reason I do this is to make sure I can con really concentrate on that mind to muscle connection, um, really working my lats, um, getting that nice good stretch, you know, on the lower part. Now I usually superset this with hyperextensions, making sure I get enough blood into my lower back because I know what's uh, what's about to come, which are deadlifts and T-bar rows and corner rows and your one-arm dumbbell rows and, and you know so forth. So I'm making sure that I do warm up my lower back. Now, when I do warm up my lower back, you know I do it two different ways, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but you know, back along to the um, the mach machine-assisted pull-up. You want to make sure that, you know, at the bottom, you see a lot of people, they only come down and go down halfway and they pull themselves back up. Or, you know, you don't have to come all the way up on, on a pull-up. Once you come all the way up, then, you know, you take that emphasis off your lats. And then, you know, actually you'll see a lot of people, you know, kind of round their back and try to kick their way back up. <clears throat> that way you're actually, you know, targeting more on your front delts than your actually lat and your lats. So right here... You'll actually see I do you know two different ways for my um, my hyper extensions. The first way I shall show you right now is it concentrates more on you know down there you have a fascia tissue which is called your thoracolumbar fascia, and it's basically it looks like a Christmas tree, and it makes you know the bottom part of your bottom part of your lower back, and it also concentrates on your glutes and your hamstrings. Now, the second part, what I usually do is I round my back, tuck my chin in, and cross my arms, but I don't, you can see I don't go down all the way. I just basically just round my back and let the back do the work, and basically I'm working on your erector spinae and your serratus posterior inferior. So that's what I do to warm up my lower back before I get into my, you know, for my deadlifts. So as you can see right now, you know, we're going straight into the deadlifts. Um, <clears throat> what I usually do is on my first two, my first set, it's a warm-up set, you know, just to get that blood back in there again. Um, making sure my hamstrings are warmed up, my glutes are warmed up. I'll hit about 15 to 20 reps, and then we'll start going into the working sets. And I'll move my way back up a little bit heavier. You know, with myself, you know, a lot of people ask me if I go heavy. I never go heavy. Um, you know, I, I went heavy one time. My, I let the ego get the best of me. You know, I went up to 500, which is heavy for me. You know, me being 40, I'll be 42 this year. Um, 500 is heavy for me. So that was the one time and one time only. I'll never do it again. Um, the highest I will go up to is about 405. Um, but if I do a 405, it'll be about 10 reps, and then I'll drop set from there. Usually, I'm always doing drop sets. As you can see here, you know, I went up to 315 on this particular day, and then I'll do 10 reps. Next set, I'll do anywhere between 10 to 15. On the last set, I'll do 15 to 20 reps. So, 
you know, make sure that, you know, I get that back low, you know, that lower back nice and tight. The erector spinea really pops out on stage when you turn around and hit that lat spread and that, you know, that back double by. You know, to me, you know, shows are one with either legs. If you have, you got to have a nice, nice good pair of legs and at the same time, your back. You have a great back, you have a great chance to win. So, you know, these are the deadlifts that, you know, I perform. And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer. I do a lot of drop sets, a lot of drop sets. And that's what, you know, gets the blood into that, that muscle. And it really stretches out that fascia tissue and makes that muscle grow. on the very last set um, I go back to um, the weight that I left off which which is about 315 um, I'll do one heavy set I do anywhere between 10 to 15 reps this particular day I did I believe I did about 10 reps um, this is after a drop set um, I'll, I'll rest for about a minute minute and a half and go right back into it put the weight back on hit about 10 to 15 and I'll finish off with there. Just make sure I get that good amount of, you know, blood and really stretch out that fascia. Hey, you guys out there in TV land. When you guys, I see people, when they use straps, I didn't pick this up until like about, I've been training for what, 20 years? About 10 years into my training. I've always used to wrap them. If you look, I used to wrap them overhand, right here which still slips out a little bit quicker. You want to take the strap under here, twist, and tighten. That way it becomes a lot tighter in your wrist, opposed to the other way. This way, it's not as tight. It's a lot looser. So make sure here, under, Over and twist. All right. Well, with that being said, now you know how to use straps. Make sure that you use them right and not the wrong way like I did for so many years. Um, it'll help you a lot with your grip and your strength. As you can see now, I'm getting about to get into um, corner rows. Um, but they're not really in the corner, but you know they're up against the wall. Um, as you can see, I use 25s instead of 45s. And the reason why is... When I use 25s, I found out you get a lot better range of motion, a lot more stretch in your lat, and it really, you know, pumps that, works that back out a lot more than using 45s. When you put a 45 on there, if you ever watch other videos, you're really, really limited in your range of motion. And you'll see a lot of guys just sit up there and, you know, basically it's like a three or four or five inch movement the whole time. This way... The reason why I use 25s again is to get a better range of motion and a better stretch in my lat. That way it really, really works that, you know, that, that latissimus dorsi area, that back area. So that way you can actually fly away in these shows. Like I said, you got a great back, you got a great chance to win. Same thing what I normally do is I do a drop set with the same thing. Um, this particular day I did um, on my last set. And then, you know, I do like, you know, 10, 10, 10, three sets of 10, drop it. And then on my very last set, I'll go back heavy again, put the weight back on, hit about anywhere between 10 to 20 reps. So next, we have a hammer strength row. And, you know, as you can see, all these movements that I'm doing are more for thickness 
it's not so much for width it's all for thickness in that back i do i do i do the hammer strength row this way um as you can see i put one foot down one foot up i don't really sit on the sit on the um, bench um the little seat that's provided um usually i do this or i'll do something that's called croc rows which are unassisted unassisted um dumbbell rows which you know i don't put a, i don't put my hand up on a bench um i don't put my hand up on the bar it's just basically you know your your elbow is dropped to your your thigh and you just you know you're just rowing it that way so that way it's all unassisted um but this particular day i felt like i wanted to do a little bit something different um i wanted to do the hammer strength throw so you could actually see what you know what i usually do i do a lot of different exercises um you know it's what's going to get the stimulation you know stimulate stimulate that muscle a lot more so this particular day you know i do um hammer strength hammer strength throws there's another type of movement that I use um, on this right here. Um, as you can see, I'm si I actually I'm sitting down a little bit lower. I'm not even sitting. I'm actually leaning down all the way down. My chin is up on that pad just about. And what this does, it works the rhomboids, the terrace minor, terrace major, and really hits your traps a lot and your rear delts. If you keep your elbows up and you pull back, you're really hitting those major areas. So when you hit that back double by, it really looks impressive. This is the same movement again. As you can see, I pull straight back. Basically, you're pinching your shoulder blades together. And you'll feel it the next day in that upper back area. So these are some of the tips that I use. Um, try them out. There'll be more tips to come.